Oh, cool. That doesn't send you careening off the bridge. Rad. Uh, welcome back to Let's Play Neo. You just missed Yatsunokami. It was so cool. Uh, it was so cool that I'm going to show it again. So cool. And that's incredibly useful. Like, it hits multiple times. It doesn't put you in danger. Because it's a separate thing from you. Like, it acts as a projectile. Um, and it's really strong. And it's an AoE. The only downside is that it's expensive. Uh, and it used to be even less expensive. Which is insane to me. Uh, I think it costs 8 pips now. Used to be less. Uh, we're going to leave this room alone for now. We will be back to it, though. Uh, so this mission is our very first one in, and we have a, an Anki to play anyway. I think Ankis have to be the most common yokai type. Uh, or at least the most common big ones. I think they're, I, like, the Gakis and the, uh, what are they called? Like, the Dredges are still probably one and two. As far as the big runs go... Uh, so I'm saying this is our this is our first mission in uh, the new region, and I think one of the reasons for those region transitions uh, is in in both this and the previous game might be not only to make the scope of the world seem bigger without doing an actual map or like an open world, but also because it kind of acts like a bottleneck. Uh, it resets your your Kodama account for one. So they can more carefully balance the levels around things like uh, how many elixirs that you can you can respawn with, or how many elixirs they can expect you to have. So in that way, it functions a little bit like uh, resource dumps do in survival horror games. You know, when you come up against uh, an area or a boss that's just a bullet sponge, it's meant to drain you a little bit, so the developers can have a better sense of what you're going to bring into the next section and reintroduce a little bit of tension. I think it might be similar to that. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This one is being a little bit nimble. More so than I expected. Yeah, so I think balance has something to do with that game design choice. Okay, so from the outside, we actually have a couple of ways that we can go. This we want to watch. So you can actually go up this mountain either way. Uh, oh, nice. I was worried that might clip the roof. Uh, you can actually go uh, down a different route from that inner mine shaft, and it takes you out near the top of the mountain. Uh, and you kind of end up fighting your way down. Or, alternatively, you corkscrew your way up like this. Uh, and that's not the only ooh, 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 point where this level branches in a really interesting way, either. I actually forgot the Yankees could come straight down uh, if you're... Oh, is that death? Yep! Ah, oh, man. And to an Anki, too... All right, that's not a bad run back at all. Almost got messed up by the fact that you uh, you take a little bit of stamina damage, and you get staggered a little at, uh, the moment they pop out of the yokai realm. Almost immediately got grabbed again. Too bad though, we picked up our kitty. Now we're just laying in. Ah, uh, that is revenge. We revengeanced. Uh, so we can go backwards across the bridge here. Uh, and that leads to a little village section in the Dark Realm. Alternatively, we have a completely different branch as we snake up the mountain. Get it? Because it's a forest of snakes! I also liked Bloodborne. <laughs> Bloodborne. 
I too thought Bloodborne was a very good game, Team Ninja. So we're going to dispel that, and one small system that I want to highlight a little more uh, ends up being a very big deal. And probably one of my favorite things about this in the previous game. Um, it's the key pulse system. I've always described it like Gears of War's, um, ooh, that was almost me falling straight to my death. If the collision had decided to bounce me a little bit to the left instead of the right. Uh, it's, it's Gears of War's active reload system, but for your stamina. Uh, it keeps your hands active, it keeps your hands moving around. Even when you're ostensibly out of the resource that you use to do everything. Uh, it requires some presence of mind, and it feels really good to master. Both intrinsically and extrinsically, because it rewards you with uh, with more stamina to play with. Uh, so normally you swing your weapon, and then you have to wait for the key bar to refill so you have stamina to do other stuff or, or swing it again. But there's a little period where the uh, the key that you spent attacking can be recovered with a single quick button tap, without having to wait the whole time for it to regenerate. Uh, it's also the way you dispel those swirling puddles like that. Oh, I got them both at once because they were overlapping. Cool. Uh, those swirling puddles Yokai create. I think on its face, it's just a really good active system uh, that adds to Neo's depth. And some of the skills that, that uh, I've been putting points into also enhance the key pulse even further. Like, one of them uh, lets you dodge to activate one. That's always one of my favorites. It's just a good general purpose upgrade. Another one gives you uh, defensive and offensive buffs when you perfectly time a key pulse. And you can extend how much key that you recover uh, when you do it. All really useful things. Uh, this shortcut, because this area is not the biggest in the world, and it's pretty easy to just run through to get back. Uh, anyway, that shortcut's not the most useful thing, but it's a little bit different. Uh, and it's a nifty one. It is kind of silly that's. I, I guess it connects these two points in an interesting way. Uh, in case you want to backtrack from here to the previous shrine. And then there are plenty of ways to, like, just loop your way around the level. Because uh, you can see this spits us out on the other end of the village infested by the Dark Realm. So we've split in some pretty cool ways. Uh, and then we have another one of these descents downhill. Uh, which also prevent a few different challenges to uh, tangle with. Like the Tangu. The new and improved Tengu. Uh, I actually think the Tengu and Neo 2 are a little bit easier to deal with compared to their... Oh, I have to... Ah, oh, this might be a mistake! You could hear my brain in real time going, Yes, this might be stupid, but damage. Do the damage, Dave. Don't you want damage? That's a whole plunging attack you could be doing. That's so much damage. And then mid-jump it hit me. This isn't... Um... Oh! Okay. I thought we had just lost this boy. Yeah, I need to drink the elixir too so I can pop out of this form with health. I think this worked out fine. As long as there's nothing left that's gonna kill me? Yeah, cool. We did great. Handled it perfectly. Uh, everything went as intended. There is something I'm concerned about, though. We'll get to that. But there's another kitty in an alcove. So let's see how this treats us. So right up the hill here, you can see there's a dude with a boulder. And I think, yeah, we just barely managed to get under it. Had I not... Uh, rushed 
to plunging attack a Tengu to death and had to improvise. <laughs> uh, you could deal with that boulder trap in a number of different ways. Uh, you can shoot the Gaki in the head uh, to trigger it early. You could shoot the boulder it itself, I think, and that'll dislodge it, or you can alternatively just go around this path and it spits you out on the platform that the Gaki rolls the boulder off of. Uh, and there's a chest there. So I was saying about the Tengu, uh, th I think they're a little bit easier to handle in Neo 2. They seem slower, they seem a little bit less aggressive. Um, I don't think they do as much damage either. And burst attacks actually make them even more manageable. Because uh, they're so reliable and predictable and give you so much dam uh, damage and stamina damage. I think their new moves also just, aside from the burst moves, make them less formidable too. Uh, so as we dip down into... Oh wait, no, it's not this cavern yet. Uh, but... Coming up, we're actually nearing the end of the level. Uh, we have one more shrine that's enshrouded in the Dark Realm to get to, and that is just through here. Uh, this is one of the ways we can get to it. So once again, there are some branches that we could have taken, and can still take from here, I think. Two... I think they sometimes do three, so I'm always a little cautious with that. Two, three? No. I think they can do... Yeah, they can do a single one. They can do two. I think they can do three. So you have to watch if you want to counterattack that appropriately. Then maybe we can get away with not having to fight the other one? She is aggroed, but we're about to kick this ladder down, which leads back into an earlier chamber. Uh, the one that I mentioned... Oh, hello. I forgot you existed. There's a couple of you. Uh, so we go out onto the rafter, and this is that room with the Yankee that I pointed out earlier. And now that we have a nice fire buff, we're going to drop straight on his head, do a shitload of damage, maybe break his horn. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Set it on fire uh, and stab it, and we're just missing drowning and poisoning for the full Rasputin. We didn't shoot it either. Really, we're missing a lot of the Rasputin criteria, uh, if, I'm, if I'm being honest and not a historical fraud. <laughs> There's the Kadama. I'm a little fuzzy. It was shot, stabbed, beaten, drowned. There was a burning and a poisoning in there too, right? I'm gonna get rid of this. She is being very aggressive with that Tail Slam burst attack. Uh, and I think this winds its way down into the final chamber. Yeah, through the busted Tori gate, which is such an aesthetic. These ones you can just bully, by the way. Uh, they, certain enemies will, will be able to recover and armor through your moves. Uh, the smaller they are, the less likely they'll be able to escape from a, from a hit stun. Watch this snake up here. Uh, oh, it's, it's a great trap. And it's one that, if you get caught by it, you can't be mad. Because one, it's really obvious anyway, but also they've shown you that exact trap in the previous mission of a, a snake woman hanging over a really obviously placed, uh, uh, suspiciously placed item. Aw, oh, yeah, the fist-fighting ogres. I cannot remember their names. Wow. Uh, speaking of forgetting things that happen. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> It's 
we're gonna make sure the coast is clear and we have plenty of room in which to fight this dude. Ooh, perfect. So he is lit, which means he's moving much, much more slowly than usual. Like, it's crawling. Those attacks are glacial. It gives us so much room to play with. So much room to get hits in. And our final shrine of the level is just in here. And the boss is hop skipping a jump away. Uh, speaking of, he is actually our first humanoid boss. Our first non-yokai. Uh, and as such, it, his fight is a little bit different from the first couple. But in a pretty nifty way. Also, I think his his gimmick isn't amazing, but something about it is pretty cool. Uh, and we'll get a preview the trees and you hear that? That gives you an idea of what we're going to be up against next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.